Hello everyone and welcome to the joint webinar with NI. Today we'll talk about HIL solution for scanner. Please put your micro on mute. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write them on the chat and we we'll answer them at the end of the webinar. And uh, Achesh, you can go now. Okay, uh, thank you everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah, it's fine. Uh, great. Perfect. Um, so first of all, kind of thank you to the team at AB Simulation for the opportunity to kind of present. Um, so recently, National Instruments, who, as everyone's kind of known, um, we recently kind of rebranded towards NI. And within this um, webinar, the goal of this is to give you an overview of the technical integration that exists between um, scanner and an eye uh, and in order to do that um, we'll kind of I'll talk for about 10 to 15 minutes before passing over to the AB sim team so in terms of the agenda of the items that I will kind of cover um, first of all we'll give a little bit of an overview of the industry trends that we're seeing within um, uh, the autonomous uh, the automotive space and how um, we see the need for test um, evolving and the role that NI is playing um, to, to help this and then finally we'll end with the integration that exists between NI's Hill platform and AB Simulation Scanner. So just a short background about NI and as I mentioned previously in National Instruments, um, for those of you that aren't aware, um, NI is a leader in um, test um, in the electronic space um, we are a global organization with over 7,500 employees globally um, with over 35,000 customers and we segment our business into um, kind of four key industry areas, transportation, automotive being one of them, um, aerospace, defense, government, semiconductor and our core uh, wider electronics business. Um, and this allows us to share knowledge between the different industry segments, um, but specifically within our auto, um, automotive group, where our goal is to focus on helping our customers produce um, the, the best products that they can for the market in terms of our tier ones and OEMs. Um, and in order to do that, we, we focus on the automated measurement and automated test by eliminating test as a barrier and helping you optimize helping you focus on your timelines and working together to mitigate your risks. And the way that we do that and ultimately the, the goal for us is to come up with a, a methodology that is all about software connectivity. Um, and to do that, we have to partner with many, many companies. Uh, and the goal of the presentation today will give you an overview of the integration that we've done with Scanner um, as a simulation provider um, and simulator organization to, to help support this. And it really kind of at the goal of everything that we do within the automotive team is the same as all of our customers. You know, we really want to help enable our customers to um, improve the world and um, aim for um, a world where there are zero crashes and zero uh, fatalities and zero accidents. Uh, we help create a, a zero emission world um, as well as a zero congestion world where we improve the lifestyle um, of uh, people that need to travel from A to Z. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if we look at the automotive uh, space, um, the, the big challenge is the complexity of the vehicle. Um, the car has moved away from being a mechanical system and moved completely to being a, an electronic software. Um, system and the, you see in the background of the chart the the amount of embed, lines of embedded software is increasing exponentially within the vehicle um, and this creates a huge amount of challenge for test especially uh, because this increased complexity of the systems means that we not only have to test components we have to test subsystems as well as system levels um, and make sure that we care about how the driver interacts and feels with the system. Um, the systems are continually changing requirements and um, this is being driven by, partly by the, the consumer um, and seeing about how their 
um, their requirements for vehicles changes, but also by regulation and also the, the competitive landscape of automotive. We're all faced with a lack of manpower and we, uh, you know, we, we all have a duty to help get the next uh, wave of um, engineers and scientists and into technology. Um, and we are all faced with um, unrealistic time schedules where things are needing to be at market faster with higher quality um, and at lower cost, which are all divergent elements. And if we focus this within the test area, especially within um, the world of ADAS and autonomy, this, this creates a huge amount of new uncertainty as well. Um, with this means that we have to simulate in new complex, new sensors for radars, cameras, lidars, etc., which is moving us more towards the RF and the vision realms away from traditional automotive. Uh, we have to now work towards uh, validating continually evolving software for continuous um, development and continuous integration and software of the air updates. There is a, a large potential that machine learning and artificial intelligence can play in. But the role of how this means for test is, is hugely uncertain, and we have to keep an eye on this. And as well as this, we, um, we have to see how government regulations uh, will adapt to where automotive is pushing boundaries around um, autonomy and the, 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 the whole self-driving movement. And um, it will be interesting to see, I think, how governments will um, put regulations in place. And so organizations have to stay agile to, to keep an eye on this and adapt their processes as we go. So one of the universities I work pretty closely with uh, is the University of Warwick in the UK, uh, WMG. Um, and they came up with a, a nice test continuum, which I, I tend to reuse a number of times. And we all hear about the number of millions of miles needed for testing. Um, and ultimately, um, you need to have different types of tests. You need pure simulation, uh, where the realism is, is pretty low, all the way through to physical testing and real world trials. Um, and this continuum shows that there is a, um, areas of overlap where you want to have reliability, you want to have automation. In some areas you want to have the user in the loop like you do in simulators, but sometimes you want the user out of the loop so that you can um, automate the process and have it as a repeatable system every time. And the goal of this always is to have test earlier in the product development, um, but choosing the right amount of testing in the right area. And in this next bit, I'll kind of focus in the HIL section, um, the hardware in the loop. So just a quick recap for anyone. Um, the vehicle nowadays is made up of um, up to you know 100 or so ECUs in the vehicle, all with a different embedded um, software code. And the role of HIL is to um, understand and integrate to these systems and test not only the single ECU, but also the subsystems and system level. So what we do is, um, and you'll see this now on the next slide, that we actually uh, remove the vehicle and um, connect um, a hill simulator to it. And this hill simulator from uh, example here from NI um, essentially gives you the backbone to connect and wire in the ECU instead of to a real car um, into test equipment that you can then use to stimulate and control um, the system. So as you can see through the kind of image here, what we do through the test system that we saw is we have the ability to set set points and then simulate information to go into the ECU, to spoof signals and, um, and CAN bus information and, and all the different buses. And then from this, measure the information and log this. So we can then um, sync this back to the stimulus as well as feed that back into our simulation to then re-inject a new signal. And we typically do this in kind of a millisecond uh, closed loop timeframe. And this allows us to um, have a good way of automating and reliable ways of testing this. And the way that we do this through the NI platform is through um, this PXI system, where we then inject and simulate not only into the ECU, for example, here, the ADAS ECU, the, the vehicle networks, as well as camera and radar interfaces, but need to simulate all of the other um, ECUs in the vehicle. And then we connect this to simulation modeling tools, for example, in this case, uh, we'll show how this connects to AB simulation scanner. 
So I won't go through maybe the whole detail of this, but I think when we look at a, a Hill software and hardware architecture, it's important to know that we need to allow our customers choice. Um, customers will have different tools for requirements all the way through the software and automation down to the ECU pin. And the, the, the goal of showing this is to show that we have different layers of integration. So each layer can be chosen on their own, um, where we create open APIs that you can use the NI tools or, or third parties. And the items in gray are exactly what we expect to come from a third party. For example, things like system models or stimulus data, as well as obviously the ECU and the test requirements. And the core NI um, Hill software tool that we'll talk a little bit about is NI Veristat. So NI Veristand is um, NI's um, Hill software. Um, this is a software then allowing you to test your embedded software, um, gives you configuration-based access to hardware, to the um, models that you want to import, all through kind of an interactive GUI where you can even add things like data logging and calculations and channels, um, and we can actually then stimulate the, the system from this. And the wider kind of Veristan framework is designed, and there's plenty of videos, et cetera, to show you, but uh, we'll see a, a, a slight demonstration uh, later on. Uh, but the goal of the, the way that we build this is all about giving you the ability to have a real-time test system um, built faster that gives you flexibility and openness that then you can use not only not only in your hill but also connected to your simulators that you can customize and automate and integrate your different models and simulation tools all by reducing your development time without reducing flexibility that is the core goals that we always do with Veristand and also the same with our, our hardware art. So with this, um, as I kind of showed, showed the, the NI architecture before, um, the team, uh, AV Simulation, have been doing a great job at then integrating Scanner um, directly into this. So this means that we can pull uh, models from their vehicle dynamics and systems directly into our system models, as well as the scenario generation and sensor models also into the system. And we'll kind of talk about that in the next slide a little bit more. It's also important to know that we also use the same architecture to replay uh, logger information. So this allows you then reuse um, between your hill system for simulation as well as the replay system uh, for log data from a vehicle. So if you remember back to that slide I mentioned a little bit earlier from WMG about um, needing this test continuum that allows you the ability to scale from simulation all the way to physical testing. This is exactly how NI focuses to uh, achieve this. Uh, we, in the middle, have our Hill system. And through these uh, software-connected APIs that have been implemented, for example, uh, with Scanner uh, as shown, uh, and will be shown in the demonstration, this allows us to then connect and have reuse between the core simulation on the left-hand side, as well as the um, driving simulators and the immersive simulators um, that you, you're all familiar from with, with AV simulation, as well as the data that's coming from the um, in-vehicle recording. And so this allows us to share test cases, it allows us to share scenarios, it allows us to share data as many other different items and gives us good reuse that allows us to um, have this um, reusability from component all the way up to system level and from simulation all the way through lab, through to kind of um, immersive experiences. And really focusing on these arrows is gonna be the differentiator in our opinion um, that will support the, the scalability and the efficiency of tests within your organizations. So with that, I kind of thank the, the team from AB Simulation for the opportunity to, to present and give it a short overview um, before passing on to them to, to go on a little bit more into the detail um, and also give the, the demonstration. Okay, uh, th thank you very much, much Ash, for your your very uh, interesting in in introduction and presenting uh, everything we c you can offer at at NI for for solving this challenge. So I will, on my part, focus on the the scanner part and to explain you and detail you how we did the the integration and what are the the benefits uh, and and give you a, a, an an example of concrete integration with 
between scanner and uh, NI Veristan. So just uh, just a, a focus on, on scanner uh, for those of you who wouldn't be familiar. So scanner is a complete simulation tool where uh, you can have all the all the steps to to build a complete uh, simulation application. So on the first side, you have all the model editing tools. So you can build road environment, you can build vehicle dynamics model, you can build scenario, you can model you can model a different kind of sensor. Then you can integrate uh, with your system and you can do it with different language and different uh, programming environment. And then you can simulate and it's where uh, I agree with Ash, the test continuum is very important. So what we really focus is to be able uh, to, to deliver a complete solution from a model in the loop and software in the loop, which can be run and executed uh, on a workstation uh, and to continue with uh, hardware in the loop to allow also inter interaction with the, the driver or with the engineer through a driving simulator and then to be able to exe execute massive simulation in the cloud. And of course, at the end, you always need the steps to analyze the data, to, to compute uh, indicators and to be able to iterate uh, on your model, on your system, on your architecture, to be able to optimize the development cycle uh, of your, your system. So the objective of the, 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 the project is that we wanted to, to design a very uh, flexible uh, solution. So we had a scanner on, on one side with many uh, simulation modules, and we, we, we really wanted to, to partner with uh, NI to be able to benefit from the very uh, complete solution they have to integrate any kind of uh, hardware, so to interface with any kind of hardware device and also this very uh, powerful uh, real-time uh, architecture where you can really define very precise, precisely uh, the model, the timing, and, and to, to make sure that the critic uh, loop uh, with a very hard time uh, constraint can be, uh, can be achieved. So we, we designed this architecture where you have uh, on the left uh, the host PC with any module that are not a critical like traffic scenario sensor and you have this RT gateway module that is able to uh, gather any data from the simulation and on the other part all the critical loop which is constituted of uh, the vehicle dynamics model uh, and uh, of course the interaction with the device and the unit uh, under test. So we, we, we uh, uh, add already uh, many solutions and many modules to be able to perform uh, HL application and real-time solution, but what we wanted to do with, with NI is to provide a user experience for that that would be simplified, which means that allowing to design any kind of uh, hardware in the loop uh, application with minimizing the, the effort to uh, develop specific, specific uh, customization of the application because each application will be anytime different. You may have different kind of signal to, to, to transmit uh, and different kind of model to, to include in the loop or not. So what we wanted to, to do is to integrate better with the NI Veristan uh, engine and the, the solution wa was to, to decompose what we provide in three major major blocks. So you have one block uh, on the top, which is the scanner I.O. custom device, which is aiming at communicating with RT Gateway and allows you to exchange any kind of uh, data with the uh, RT uh, target. So you have a very flexible mechanism, and we you will show it. Uh, we will show it in the in the demo in the in the next slide. Uh, but you can really choose any data from the from the. A simulation that you want to send to the uh, RT platform. So it can be sensor information, it can be uh, information from the scenario, from the driver, or for any part of the of the simulation. Okay. You also have the link with the vehicle dynamics model because you you have the vehicle dynamics model that will execute on the on the target. So we 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 inc included a RT version of Calas 
that directly execute uh, on the target. So that can be part of the critical critical loop. And we also have a kind of uh, gateway to be able to also share the vehicle dynamics information with the host the PC. So that when you have a computation on the RT target, then the position is updated through this UDP linked and the sensor uh, position is always accurate accurate and synchronized with the rest. So you have this very dual uh, application. Uh, the principle is that on the host PC, you can also have multiple PCs. So if you have a high number of sensors, for example, you can completely parallelize the computation and benefit for any uh, computation power that you will have on the host uh, PC side and also benefit from the critical loop that will run on the RT uh, Veriston engine, okay? So you, we, we will show in the next slide the detail about how to set up the configuration and on a specific example, how you can very easily configure everything and to make uh, the thing run. Okay, so the first subject is uh, how to include the, the model. So you can just drag and drop the model on your terrain. It's very simple. And the only thing that you have to configure on the model is the IP uh, address of the PXI. Okay, so it's very simple. You configure uh, the model and just explain that the model will, you will be executed on the RT, uh, RT uh, target. Then the next step is to configure uh, the uh, real-time uh, gateway module, okay? So when you do that, uh, you will uh, select from the simulation all the information that is interesting for you. So again, very, very simple. You have some filter that you can prepare or that you can edit. So for example, we have prepared a filter here, okay? And you choose the data that you want to send from scanner and to send to scanner. Just uh, put the IP address on the PXI. So on the vehicle side, you can have a, a list of uh, sensors, for example. So just configure your sensor. You can have one or multiple sensors. For example, in this case, we, are, we use a front uh, camera, okay? And then edit the filter so you can choose to send the data from uh, the sensor to the, to the system. So just select the attribute that you, you want to send. So you could select everything or just filter the interesting. So in, in this case, we focus on the distance, for example, to the next vehicle. And if we need to add an extra uh, detail, so for example, we can add uh, the gear on gauge that can be needed by the, by the model. Just select everything and export the data. So you just export the data through a CSV file, okay? that can be then used by the Veriston engine to know exactly what is uh, the content of the communication link between uh, the RT gateway and uh, the custom device. So then we'll have a look at the custom device. So the custom device is really the mirror of the RT gateway configuration. So where you are in, uh, in Veriston, it's very simple, you can just you have access to this, uh, this uh, uh, custom device. You can just load the CSV data that contain exactly the detail of the, the, the UDP uh, protocol, okay? Just select the file and it will be uh, updated with the data that you have prepared on the, on the, host, uh, the host side, okay? So if you miss some data and you want to add any data, it's very simple. You go back to scanner, add the new data, reload the file, and the content is updated. So you don't have to program anything to uh, modify the kind of uh, data that you need to exchange. It's very, uh, very simple. So you can very have the benefit from this flexible uh, architecture and really customize the link and the data that you need to, to, to exchange. Okay, then you can uh, add and, um, and connect the system. So for example, in this case, we will have, uh, uh, we will replace just to, to, for the demo, we'll replace the ECU by a, by a model, but it will be exactly the same with a real ECU where you could uh, use the NI uh, board to, 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 to exchange data with the ECU. So for the demo, we just uh, use a simple AEB, uh, AEB model that takes as input uh, the driver uh, brake command, the sensor input, and uh, compute a modified brake command 
in case of emergency to uh, break uh, before the before the driver at a maximum break. Okay, so then you have the model, uh, so you can just uh, add, uh, add add the model. In this case, this is the AEB uh, model, and then you have access to the input and output of the of the of the model. So the break command, the sensor input, and the modify break command as an as an output. Okay. So then, what you you need to do is to uh, connect the, the 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 output of the system on the test to the vehicle dynamics. So first thing is uh, so yeah, just connect uh, before we connect the the um sensor uh, input to the to the model so go back to rt gateway so we have exposed all the data for example the distance to collision coming from the from the sensor then you can easily uh, connect to the input uh, of the system on the test so just a link you have linked uh, the data so then it's connected then you can link the output of the ecu to the Calas RT model, okay, which is the vehicle dynamics model. Then the uh, output of the IEB is the modified break command, okay, and you you just we just expose all the uh, vehicle dynamics model input and output, okay. So you have all the input command of the vehicle, so you can just link the modified break command with the break. Okay, so then this is the result. So you have, you see that you have uh, the simulation and what is also very inter interesting with NI Veristan is that you can also uh, get any data uh, coming from the real-time target and monitor your data. So you can build your own uh, dashboard. So in this case, we have built just a dashboard to monitor the, the break command and the, uh, the break amplitude over, over time. So you can see that you have both simulation uh, running in parallel. You have your scenario with the stop uh, vehicle, and you have the sensor uh, detection and the modified brake command that is sent uh, to the vehicle uh, dynamics model. So uh, everything is working well, and uh, we uh, have uh, this uh, dual uh, architecture where you can really uh, integrate your system on the test in the loop. And thanks to NI Veristan, uh, RT engine, you can make sure that all the timing, uh, precise timing, precise synchronization between uh, the model and the system under test can be achieved and can be uh, performed. So as a, co a conclusion, what we have been uh, showing uh, is a complete uh, solution and the aim is not only to provide a solution for uh, hardware in the loop because uh, hardware in the loop uh, is already working with scanner from a long time but what we want wanted to do is really uh, to facilitate uh, for the final user the way of creating uh, HL application uh, by providing a more complete integration with uh, an Iveriston uh, so that can really benefit to the to the user so the solution uh, relies on a different block. You uh, see that you now have the Calas real-time vehicle dynamics model that can directly run on the RT, uh, RT target, target. target. You have target. the dual architecture, so you can really... Maybe a mic to... Okay. Uh, you have the, this dual architecture where you can on, on the side benefit from Everything that is very uh, flexible uh, on the, the Windows uh, host uh, side, so you can have uh, many traffic scenario driver sensors. You have this linked, and you have the critical loop that can be executed on the RT, uh, RT target. It's a very generic solution uh, because simulation I/O can be very easily configured and connected with the system on the test. Okay, so it will really uh, speed up the, the, the development of, of your uh, hardware in the loop project. Uh, and you have these uh, scanner RT models that are developed as custom device and as model, so that all their interfaces are completely exposed 
uh, in a very strong, so you have the complete flexibility to connect uh, the simulation with, uh, with the system. Okay, so the, 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 the complete overview of our solution is, uh, is complete, and now you, we are uh, open to any question that you have. So if you have any question, please uh, write the question uh, in the chat. So for, for, for the AV simulation team or for the NI team, we will be, will be very happy to, to answer, it, answer it. Okay, so we have some questions. And uh, one of is, what is the maximum resolution to port it and how many cameras can be simulated in real time? Oh, sorry, Laura, can you just repeat the question, sorry? Yes, what is the maximum resolution to port it and how many cameras can be simulated in real time? That's a good question. Um, that is an area that we're still doing work to benchmark the number of cameras and resolution. Um, there's a number, to be honest, there's a number of different bottlenecks and that's what we can get from the simulation tool. Um, in terms of graphics and things like this. The other is about the amount of movement of data that we can do, and then there are some injection limitations. But to be honest, we're, we're still doing some benchmarks and happy to follow up maybe more in person on where we're up to. Um, and the last thing, actually, to be honest, it also comes down to finances, what, what, what's, what's feasible um, in terms of kind of customer budget. So I, I, I know I've missed the question without giving a straight answer, but. I think there's more exploration and maybe discussion we can have um, together. Okay, just to, to complete your, your answer, Ash, and thank you for, for that, uh, is that uh, with the, the flexible architecture that we have that we have designed, you can see that you, you still have the, the, the sensor model that can be executed uh, on, the, on the host part, which means that you could uh, benefit from the very flexible architecture from scanner and you could have multiple computers to run your uh, sensor model. So it's then more a limitation on the on the hardware. So if you have many sensors and you want to par parallelize them and to, to, to have them computed on multiple computers, then, uh, then it's feasible. And then you will only need to let it choose uh, and configure the data that you want to, to export to the, the RT, uh, RT target. So it's one yeah. benefit from the, the dual architecture that we have put in place, yeah, yeah. that you still have uh, the, the ability yeah. to do that. Yeah. And the it second thing is that we, we really wanted to, to focus on the, 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 the critical loops that run on the RT target, and we have been able to, to achieve uh, high frequency computation uh, up to uh, 2,000 uh, hertz for computing Scala, uh, Scalas, sorry. Uh, at a very um, constant uh, and very precise uh, precise timing. Okay, so for us it's very important when designing this kind of application to really choose what is critical and what is less critical, and and to have this flexible architecture where you can also uh, parallelize things and then optimize the whole performance of your application. Yeah, and, and same for us, and which is why I'm not sure there will be a, that's why it's very hard to give a, a top end limit, um, more budget and um, architectural advice is needed for that discussion. Okay, uh, there is another question. Is this solution can be used for any kind of HRL application? Yes. Yeah. So we, the NI platform, and from our side, you know, we we do this across all all vehicle domains. So everything from ADAS and AD to traditional body chassis to powertrain, both combustion and EV, infotainment, V2X, um, and all the way up to system level um, and connection simulators. So, yeah. So yeah, th that was really what we why we wanted to partner with uh, NI on on this is because we we know that they can really. Uh, address uh, any kind of application and also that we focus on this uh, open architecture where you don't have any, uh, let's say, hard coded uh, information on one side and the other. So you can see it's very open and, and, and very flexible and, and we really wanted to provide this, this kind of, so of solution to address 
many use cases because we, we know that uh, the, the challenge from uh, AD and, and ADAS validation that we are facing uh, will require a very uh, flexible and powerful uh, solution to address uh, all these different use cases. Okay, and how Scanner and NI are synchronized? So, so you, you see that you, we have this dual architecture, so you have a, we have a very strong synchronization that is handled by the NI very strong engine on the RT target. So uh, everything that is critical, okay, is running. So we have, that's why we have, uh, let's say, part of the, the, the simulation and the Kalas RT that is uh, executed on the, on the RT target. Of course, if needed, and if for an application, you would have another module that would be uh, needed in the critical loop, then we, we, we could also execute it on the RT target. So the, 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 the principle is always that you really need to identify and focus on what is critical, what is the critical loop in terms of synchronization, okay? And, and you can have the, this very strong synchronization uh, on the RT, RT target, and then you have a, a more, let's say, flexible synchronization uh, between the, the, the host and the target. Okay, and uh, um, could it be used with other vehicle dynamics model? So yes, you, you have seen that uh, we have uh, decomposed on the architecture part, we have decomposed the simulation block in, in three parts. So you have the uh, custom device that is just aiming at uh, gathering the simulation data on one hand, you have the color sortie, which is another block, and you have third block that is uh, the, the communication link with the model handler. Okay, so which means that you could remove any of this block and complete this block with another another solution. So, for example, you could use Kalas RT only with another another system. Okay, you could also replace Kalas and replace it with uh, any other vehicle dynamics model and only keep the commudp block to uh, update the position in the simulation and also use the uh, uh, custom device block to get information from the simulation like sensor so uh, any kind of vehicle dynamics model that will would run on the ni veriston will uh, would also be able to benefit from this uh, architecture Uh, great. So, what is the maximum thread frame data rate transfers from AVS to any NI system? So, so uh, 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 as I explained uh, earlier, uh, you also have part of the scanner solution that executes on the target. So, at, at this, uh, everything that's run on the target can be synchronized at. Uh, 1000 or 2000 hertz okay it's the critical loop and the other information are synchronized at uh, 100 uh, hertz um where is the distortion and post processing done So you can uh, you can uh, record uh, all the data uh, thanks to the the, the very stand engine and also as we also have the link uh, with the with the simulation so you can also output any f of the information that runs on, on the that is uh, executed on the RT target you can also uh, uh, provide the output to 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 scanner okay so you have a a dual link uh, communication and same for the vehicle dynamics you can also uh, you can also have access to the all the output on the vehicle dynamics uh, through the links which means that uh, scanner also records record everything okay so you can benefit from all the uh, exporting and al analyzing tool that you have in scanner okay to review and analyze in detail uh, your uh, your simulation, okay. So everything can be recorded and everything can be uh, reviewed and analyzed uh, afterwards. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so why some issue during real-time address connection uh, to get away UDP communication with office internet? Any blockage in server? I didn't really get the question. <laughs> yeah, I think I will send it to you. Okay. I I think I understood the question. So this is more about the implementation about using UDP as the communication. Um, so no, there, sh there shouldn't be any kind of blocking. Uh, underneath, something we didn't expose is kind of how Vera standards built in terms of it's got multiple control loops. Um, so that's actually built into the architecture to to have this as a kind of non-blocking me uh, mechanism. Okay, so I see the question, but I don't really understand uh, it. So yes, we are we are using uh, UDP. So UDP is a very fast and effective uh, protocol. Uh, okay, and we have a direct link uh, between the the host and and the target. So you don't uh, need to uh, go through uh, your uh, uh, business network, uh, so you can have a, a direct UDP communication. Okay, so it's very fast, it's very effective, so you can exchange many data with a, a low delay. And we we also have uh, other solution than UDP. So we had some cases where you, you we need to be even faster than UDP, uh, more real time. So uh, let's say UDP is only one option for for RT gateway. And we could uh, also replace this option by, by uh, many others. So we, we add also experience by replacing uh, UDP with a reflective memory or Dolphin card. So in case of, let's say, application where you would really need to, to, to have a, a large flow of data to, 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 to exchange, uh, we could easily replace uh, UDP. It's not a problem, but I would say that for uh, the, the main uh, application uh, UDP is let's say the standard way of, of exchanging uh, data. So yeah, is it possible to simulate one shell waiver features? Can you please repeat? Yeah. Yes. Uh, is it possible to simulate one shell waiver features? Um, I, I didn't understand yeah, what like, they were asking. Sorry. Uh, sort of, did you? Did you? Uh, uh, not, not really. Uh, I'm not sure. Is the question about uh, let's say the the number of link that you can have, uh, but but. But I think it's uh, it relies to the, the the same answer than than before. So we have this uh, uh, let's say standard way to communicate that will uh, be effective in most most of the cases. And if needed, we can replace by by another link. But I'm not sure that was really the the question. There's another question. What is the supported image format? So, so for the moment, we we didn't really focus on the on the image. So the, it was more uh, let's say attribute from the from the sensor. Uh, but we we know that there is also a, a solution uh, on, the, on the NI uh, uh, on the NI side to be able to also communicate uh, video stream and, and and image. So in, in that case, uh, we can really be flexible and adapt to. Uh, any uh, video format. Yeah, and just to add to that, uh, there tends to be different cameras that we interface with. So that will be either like things like USB or Gigi cameras, but m more relevant would be the LVDS based cameras. So GMSL and FPD link based cameras um, and uh, allowing the ability to inject that.
And I I think we have other question. Is there another question? Don't hesitate to send it to me. Okay, then, Laura, I think we can maybe close the, yes. Close um, the webinar. <laughs> yes, thank you, everyone, for attending this webinar. And if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to send us an email to contact at ivsimulation.fr and follow us on our social media. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, all. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.